Hello, this is Matt on the Moon Lambeau channel. Ripple CEO Brad Garlinghouse delved into waters that he frankly wouldn't normally want to be splashing around in. He explained why he believes that the price of XRP has been pumping. And frankly, it's not surprising. And I'm not even going to tease you. Like He, he tells you not, there's more to cover in this. There's, there's plenty to break down here. But uh, in a nutshell, it is specifically, and this wouldn't be happening otherwise, that that's his belief, if not for the fact that Donald Trump won the presidency, he won the election. That's what, and in a nutshell, why? And, and why is it? Well, all sorts of implications because, I mean, it's just a matter of fact statement. I don't think anybody in crypto is going to dispute this. I don't care what, what your politics are, and I'm not going to get into anything politics-wise that doesn't have to do with crypto specifically or finance or the economy. But whatever side of the aisle you're on, left or right, I, and I don't care, We I say we should be able to be friends regardless. Um, whatever you believe... I don't know how anybody in crypto uh, thinks could possibly with a straight face tell me that uh, what the Biden administration has done in crypto has been good. I, I just it, it's very clear that from the top of the current administration on down, Biden on down, it's just been attack after attack after attack. They're a cohesive government unit that have been seeking to destroy our opportunity for life changing wealth. That's exactly what it is. Now we got a shift. And yes, the market's responding. And frankly, it's not surprising. So I want to talk about that, some of uh, his comments, because he was um, he was on uh, Fox Business uh, just yesterday, and he shared some uh, some things that I think you're going to find very interesting. And also want to share with you perspective and uh, commentary and insight, frankly, from uh, Fox Business journalist Eleanor Terrett. Uh, she's, she's, she, being a journalist, of course, she's got her connections. And so you might be wondering, okay, Market's getting all hot and bothered, all excited, right? And XRP has been running on this, this great news along with the rest of the market. Okay, Are we actually going to get a pro-crypto SEC chair for the first time in history? Uh, I believe the answer is yes. And Eleanor Terrett sharing some insight from her connections uh, will lead you to have additional confidence if you didn't already have sufficient confidence, frankly. And uh, really, frankly, uh, it sounds like what may, be hap may happen and just probably be a very positive development, is more power gets shifted over to the CFTC rather than the SEC, uh, you know, ruling over crypto, which frankly, they never had the right to rule over in the way that they have been anyway. Uh, so, so anyway, there's there's plenty of stuff to talk about. But before going further, I do want to be clear, I do not have a financial background of any kind. I am not offering financial advice. And you definitely should not buy or sell anything because of anything I say or write. I'm just an enthusiast who enjoys making YouTube videos about crypto related topics, but just as a hobby and just for fun. Um, you know, maybe we should start by talking about the fact that there's a massive rumor, and this is actually uh, discussed on uh, on Fox Business yesterday. Like, he, so Brad Garlinghouse, he was on Liz Clayman's program. Uh, he's point blank asked if he met with uh, with with Donald Trump, and he said, "Well, I don't want to give any specifics, you know, something, something to that effect." And she's like, "Okay, well, I'll take that as a yes." Okay, so we don't technically know for sure. But then we get headlines like this. Fox Business confirms Ripple CEO meeting with Donald Trump. <laughs> I look at that, I'm like, God damn it. No, that's not what happened, not technically. Now, I do believe it did occur, and I'm, I'll show you exactly why right now. In fact, so take a look at this to just kind of set the table. I want to make sure you guys are aware of this. So uh, this is the day after the election, a post from Ripple CEO Brad Garlinghouse, November 6th, and he says, and he tagged Donald Trump here on X. He said, uh, uh, Donald Trump, congratulations. Some fodder for your first 100-day checklist to get things moving. Fire Ginsler day one, no delays. In his place, appoint Giancarlo, Brooks, or Gallagher. They'd be massive upgrades in rebuilding the rule of law and reputation at the SEC. Host a family dinner and get the Republicans and Democrats moving the digital asset market structure bill forward in the Senate. That would be nice. Like, crypto should not be partisan. Okay, it should be bipartisan. There's nothing inherently about crypto that should make one political party overwhelmingly against it, yet it is the case. The Democrat Party overwhelmingly against it. That shouldn't be the case. <sighs> anyway, and then he says, uh, and last but not least, can we get some clarity similar to XRP and Bitcoin that ETH is not a security, right? Okay, so um, that was reposted by uh, Ripple's CLO, Chief Legal Officer Stuart Alderati, and this is when we got this news. So Ripple did meet with real Donald Trump, uh, like he, at real Donald Trump. That's his official Twitter account, our X account now. Uh, check this out. So here's what he posted on November 6th. Stuart Aldrin. Thank you to both campaigns for a hard fought race and for invigorating the democratic process. Congratulations to Donald Trump. 
you took the time to listen to Ripple's story when we met in San Francisco this summer, and you prioritized crypto as a key policy issue. Now, let's move swiftly to end the regulation by enforcement approach we've endured in recent years and position the U.S. as the crypto capital of the world. Okay, so I thought that was pretty cool news. So that means that uh, somebody from Ripple, uh, Stuart Alderati presumably, and I was I would have guessed Brad Garlinghouse, uh, met with him. I mean, somebody did. It'd be weird. So who's meeting with him if, if not the top? If not Brad Garlinghouse, then who? And why not Brad Garlinghouse, right? So we don't technically know that he did. But doesn't it seem like a virtual certainty? And then there was this, and this is why people started speculating further that was the case. Somebody wrote this post that read in part on X, Ripple actually met with Trump, and then Brad Garlinghouse, he liked that post, and that was shared by Zach Rector. So that's how we know that. Um, so I, mean, I think the answer is yes, but it's just kind of silly that the Crypto Basic definitively stated that uh, Ripple CEO confirmed it when he absolutely did not, literally, he technically and literally did not. Uh, I still do think that that happened, but he, it's very clear that he is happy that uh, this, this election went down the way, the way that it did. Not surprisingly at all. And there are good reasons for this. And so check this out. There was this post from, um, uh, from Brad Garlinghouse after he was on yesterday. He shared this on X and he wrote, Always great to catch up with you, Liz Clayman. Markets have responded to Trump's win. He's bringing crypto back to America making crypto great again, MCGA, uh, the incoming Congress will make sure U.S. innovation gets the regulatory clarity it deserves. Yeah, and so I don't know how you could deny that this is the case. The stock market took off after the election, like immediately. Uh, as soon as it even looked like uh, Trump was likely to win on election night, uh, Bitcoin started going, and now altcoins have followed to a certain degree. Uh, this would not have happened if Harris had won. It just would not have. We, in fact, seeing how strong things have, have moved in this direction since the election in, in you know, a little over 10 days, uh, I speculate that had Harris won, it would have been the opposite. Everything would have dumped. <laughs> that would be my four fun guess. We'll never know. <clears throat> but I believe it probably, the, the stock market, crypto would have dumped. Because look at how they behave when this happens, <laughs> right? Um, now, I still don't think it would have <clears throat> um, wrecked the, the, the bull run from happening. Perhaps less money would have flowed in than otherwise now will. Uh, that's reasonable speculation, I certainly think. But maybe the market would have dumped, and then people would have been like, well, okay, at least we know what the next four years looks like. And so, well, because I'll tell you this, markets, more than anything, they hate uncertainty. They hate that. If they at least know who's going to be in charge and can kind of get a feel for what that may look like, well, then they're like, okay, well, then I'll invest accordingly. That's kind of what it looks like. So even if the market had taken a dump, I still think it would have recovered. I still firmly believe we would have had a bull season here. But it's stronger now, probably, than it otherwise would have been. And Brad Garlinghouse certainly believes that, to a large degree. In fact, check this out. That, uh, <laughs> there's this post from, uh, from attorney John Deaton. He tagged Brad Garlinghouse. He wrote, Brad Garlinghouse explains on Liz Clayman's show how in 10 days, we've already unlocked $800 billion in market cap solely because the market now anticipates a national regulatory environment. And so that's true. And so on this program, on Fox Business, one of the things Brad Garlinghouse stated is that you can actually measure the market difference here. So b b before the election, he said that the crypto asset class, the market cap for the entire asset class was about $2.2 trillion, and then it went up to over $3 trillion over that time period. Eight, so that's an $800 billion increase just because of the expectation that we're finally going to have from the top on down a crypto-friendly administration, and perhaps a friendly... Uh, pro crypto SEC chair for the first time in history, which we do need to still see unfold, but I'm optimistic and you'll see why in just a minute here. Uh, but he stated that he's right. This is unquestionably the case. And I hate that this is partisan. It shouldn't be partisan by nature. It's not. It's just people made it that way in politics. It's dumb as hell. <sighs> then there was this from Fox Business Journal's Eleanor Terrett talking on basically the same topic here. She said, uh, Ripple CEO Brad Garlinghouse tells Liz Clayman, that since election day, the best performing crypto assets, besides Bitcoin, are all related to U.S. companies. Yeah, and so I'll pause and note, he, he said uh, companies are uh, tech, he's something like tech related or created by, uh, you know, people in the United States or something that, to that effect. But, but he's right. So he said, best performing crypto assets besides Bitcoin are all related to U.S. companies. XRP, Solana, Cardano. Uh, he says that shouldn't be a surprise given the pressure now expected to be lifted from U.S. crypto companies. So, folks, uh, XRP is unshackled. It is it is untethered. It is free to run wild. 
It has legal clarity. We're in this insane bull market, which is only going to get more crazy. That's why XRP has been doing what it's doing. It's because the, the asset class moves in tandem. So why is XRP running? Yes. And, and mind you, of course, I know you totally understand. Like XRP has been coiled up for almost seven years, so it was going to blow anyway. But why is it happening exactly as it has for the last roughly 10 days? That's why. The market has spoken, period. <laughs> right? I totally agree with what he's saying here. It makes all the sense in the world. Now, we do need to see uh, an actual pro-crypto uh, SEC chair, but I'm very optimistic indeed that, that will come to pass because it's effectively uh, a Republican Party platy, uh, <laughs> those aren't words, Republican Party platform at this point, basically, effectively is, uh, to be pro-crypto, which makes sense because there is definitely a pro-crypto uh, pro, uh, voting block, but there's no anti-crypto voting block. Bunch of idiot sticks over there on the Democrat side, like, sorry, but don't make dumb decisions like that. Like, who, who do you think you're winning over with that stuff? So I think, and I do think that's going to change. They're going to figure that out. But here's a post from Eleanor Terrett. With Fox Business, while Donald Trump's pick for SEC chair remains unknown, it looks increasingly, uh, increasingly likely that Gary Gensler will step down voluntarily and choose not to finish his term as commissioner, which would expire in 2026. As some had speculated he may have done, uh, Fox Business has learned. It's anyone's guess when his re resignation announcement will come, but chatter in D.C. circles is that he'll likely announce after Thanksgiving his intention to exit in early January ahead of Trump's inauguration. Well, can you imagine if this election didn't go the way it did? And if we were stuck with Gensler until 2026? Yeah, that's, that's not going to happen, though. Not now. <laughs> Praise the Jesus! We're not going to have to deal with that. Anyway, she continues. As for who will replace him, former CFTC chairman uh, Giancarlo, um, Chris Giancarlo, that's right, Chris Giancarlo, uh, who, by the way, is very pro-XRP, and he stated several months or so before the SEC uh, sued Ripple, he stated on his own that XRP is itself is not a security, so he's on the right side of that. So anyway, former CFTC chair Giancarlo has thrown cold water on rumors of his nomination, but Robin Hood chief legal officer Dan Gallagher uh, Willie Farr partner Bob Stebbins, uh, Wilkie Farr, uh, former SEC Commissioner Paul Atkins, and Paul Hastings lawyer uh, Brad Bondi remain in the mix. As Charles Gasparino has previously reported, Gallagher has said privately he likely wouldn't take the job as his Robin Hood gig is good, but that was a few weeks ago, and the situation surrounding administration appointments are always changing. Stebbins is said to be close to Jay Clayton as he was uh, his general counsel at the SEC and rumor in D.C. circles as that Clayton uh, has, has been lobbying the transition team for Stebbins' nomination. Uh, now, while Stebbins is not a crypto native, a source close to him tells me he would take his cues on digital assets from the Trump White House. So there you go. Almost like you're not thinking for yourself, kind of like Gary Gensler's doing, taking orders from the top. That's effectively what it is. So I don't want that guy to be SEC chair. Uh, because I want somebody who is pro crypto. So I understand that if he, if that ends up being the guy that gets nominated, and if it ends up getting appointed, I understand that will be a dramatic improvement uh, because it's very clear that from the top on down, we're going to have a pro crypto administration. So we'll probably more or less get what we want anyway. But I don't want that. I want somebody who, before all this, has a track record of proving that they are pro crypto. That's what I want. So if it were up to me, absolutely not that guy. But we'll see. Anyway, she continues. Bondi and Atkins are both pro-crypto and favor lighter-touch regulations. Uh, Atkins sits on the board of the Digital Chamber of Commerce and co-chairs the organization's token alliance, where he advises on the growth of token issuances. Per, um, what's the tag here? Per, uh, Veronica, at Veraira, uh, Veronica Irwin, uh, reporting, Bondi has advised on several DeFi projects. Some other names being talked about in crypto circles are former CFTC chair Heath Tarbert, former acting comptroller of the currency, Brian Brooks. I'm a big fan of Brian Brooks. And uh, former SEC investment management director, Norm Champ. Today on Fox Business, Champ told Liz Clayman, quote, I would be honored to serve if the president asked, end quote. I'm told by people close to him that GOP SEC commissioner Mark U Uyeda uh, would be happy to serve as chair and may serve as acting chair, while GOP commissioner Hester Peirce has expressed privately she's not interested in the chair position. Okay, so on the whole, that's good. Um, but there's also this, and I think that this is going to probably add some additional com uh, confidence there. Eleanor Terrett in a separate post wrote this. 
I've been told by sources close to the transition team that the new SEC chair will be pro-crypto. The nominee will also have to be well-equipped to handle all the other issues under the SEC's purview. Public companies, the stock market, the bond market, private funds, the consolidated audit trail, et cetera. Okay, that's good, but that makes me think if somebody, if they're only going to accept somebody that's pro-crypto, then how can that be a person that doesn't have a position on crypto. It needs to be somebody that already has a track record of being pro-crypto before all of this happened, right? And then she says, this is why I mentioned earlier in the week to watch the nomination for CFTC chair just as closely as SEC. Sources tell Fox Business the Trump administration is looking to give more responsibility to the CFTC when it comes to crypto. It's unclear how that would be done at this point in time, but it would require much more funding than the CFTC currently has. Okay, so on the whole, really good stuff here. And let's be real, if things didn't go down the way they had over the last 10 days, roughly, our net worth would be markedly lower than they are now. And that, I think that's fair to say. Whatever you think about the rest of this, the whole election process and so forth, I'm not get into it on this channel. That's not what this channel's for. But at least we can agree on that, right? How could we not? If you're in crypto, like, come on. <laughs> this is good. This is good for crypto, specifically. But you can let me know what you think in the comment section below and yell and scream at me and tell me all the reasons that I'm wrong and a stupid head. I'm not a financial advisor. You should not buy or sell anything because of anything I say are right. That would be a very, very, very bad idea. Until next time, to the moon Lambo.